Great, this is uh, the Core One Summer 2015 filmed with this wonderful class. And uh, let's start with question one. Express 8 over root 3 minus 1 in the form that they want. Well, of course, did we know that we're going to multiply top and bottom by uh, root 3 plus 1? Make sure that you're multiplying top and bottom. Don't just do it for the bottom line. Don't just write it once. You're going to multiply the whole thing. So on the top line, we get 8 root 3 plus 8. And we multiply through the bottom line. It's giving us root 3 times root 3, so that's 3. Plus root 3 minus root 3, and then we've got a minus 1. So we've got 8 root 3 plus 8 over 2. We're dividing all of the top by 2. And so we get 4 root 3 plus 4. And there's our answer for the, the three marks, which is great. Isn't it? Very happy about that. Shall we go straight on to question two and then we can do them both as one video? Or should we stop it? Oh, I've just spent all this time doing that. Do a, but then this, that would be awful in the middle of the video now. Right, you just cut this part out of it. How do you edit it? <laughs> Windows moving there. Windows Windows moving. Moving. Oh, but yeah. Can I not upload it and then edit it on YouTube? <laughs> stop. <laughs> it's it's all still on the <laughs> Okay. Ah. Question two. Okay, question two. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Right. Uh, question two. It says, sketch the curve y equals minus one and root x. Now, the one that we've got up on our board, I remembered to cover up when we did it in the mock exam. I'm not that happy about that graph. I would like it to be closer to the origin of that one. That's one over x that's up there, isn't it? So minus one over x is the reflection of that in the x-axis. So we're looking for a graph that does, oh, that's not bad, does that. Oh, 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 yeah, well, that was a good, sharp intake of breath. Because look, that is not good, is it? That bit, we don't want that bit. There we go, we're happy with that. Um, try and make it symmetrical. Try and make it so that it's not too far away. I had one or two of them that were, I were a little bit dodgy, in danger of going kind of something like that. That, that, that's just not it, is it? That's going to fade away in a moment. But be careful that it doesn't end up looking there. It wants to look more like the one that remains. That's the one. Um, we're going to make sure that we're approaching the asymptotes, that you fill the full extent of the axis. It doesn't look like it stops at any point. There you go. That was two marks for that. Part two. Um, the curve y equals minus 1 over x is transformed, translated by two units, parallel to the x-axis. Now, um, what we're going to do with this is we're going to read this description and picture your poster where you've got written the four descriptions of these transformations. Translation, two units, parallel to the x-axis. That's the one where f of x goes to, well that's an x-axis, one means it's inside the bracket, doesn't it? So it's f of, inside the bracket, we want a translation to be, it's going to be x minus 2. Because that's two units in the positive direction, remember? So that's not the answer, of course, because we're going to do it in terms of this equation. So we're saying y equals minus 1 over x has got to go to y equals... We've got to take 2 away from the x before anything else happens to it. So that's take 2 away from the x before anything else happens to it, like it be underneath minus 1 as a fraction. So there's the answer that we're looking for. Does that make sense? Part 3. Again, it's helpful to think about the language that we've learned, the way that we've written these as these descriptions. A transformation that transforms the curve, y equals minus 1 over x, this time it's got to go to y equals minus 1 over 3x. And there are two equally acceptable answers to this, because of the way that the symmetry works with this curve. We could look at this and think, well look, this is, if this was y equals f of x, then this one here is before anything else has happened to the x, it's been multiplied by 3. So this is y equals f of 3x, like that. 
that you can see how that matches up. So what's that transformation? Well, that is a stretch scale factor. Well, remember our rules for this one. If it's inside the bracket, it's one over it. So scale factor of third parallel to x-axis. And that's probably, if I was doing this, that would be the answer that I would give. But looking at it also, it doesn't have to be that we've times the x by 3 before anything else has happened. We could say this is um, the same as doing what y equals f of x. I don't know why I wrote f equals x there, sorry. Um, 2, y equals a third times f of x. Because that would produce the same result, wouldn't it? If you multiply that by a third, you'd get that. So we could equally say that this is a stretch. We might spell stretch correctly <laughs> when we do it for real, but a stretch scale factor a third, but that would be a scale factor a third parallel to y-axis. Okay, so either the red or the green description is just as correct. But we have to use the word stretch. Remember, OCR insists on either the word stretch or translation. So you can't get away with words like enlargement or expand or, you know, do stuff to it. It's got to be stretch. Great. Oh yeah, and that's maths.